All right. So, did you know when you are an infant, what do infants usually do? Because they're not able to speak and use their words you to let you know. How do infants let you know when they're hungry or they're tired or just unhappy? What do you think? How do they let you know that? Does anybody know in the audience? Oops. Well, they let you know by... They cry and they make noise. They're fussy. What about a dog? When a dog wants to go outside or he's really hungry, what does your dog do to let you know? Hey, pay attention, you know me. What does a dog usually do? Does anybody know? Does anybody raise their hand or put in chat? What is it? Yeah. The babies cry, cry, and point. And then a dog. Right? Door. Right. And then cats meow, right? Yeah. So. Scratch and bark, somebody said. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So they let you know they're speaking up the best way that they know how. They let you know when they want something and you as a human being were born a stuff advocate also from the time that you were a baby you were letting others know if you know if you needed anything and so you were actually born a self advocate so you already have these skills in you that's the cool part about all this They let individuals know their likes and dislikes. John, I think this one's yours too. Mm -hmm. How do you do? So what if you are a person who is really shy or really nervous, or you just happen don't use words to speak? Or when you do speak, others have a hard time understanding you. There are so many other ways that you can do it. You know, to let others know the things you like and the things that you don't like. And here are some examples. John, are you wanting to share the examples? Yeah. <laughs> John says, I use a talker. Can you see that down by the technology? You use your hand. Oh, he uses his head sometimes. Just like the guy down below is shaking his head each way, back and forth, no or yes. And he uses his thumbs. So if you do a thumbs up, what does that usually mean if you're doing a thumbs up? Who can tell us, what does a thumb up mean? Thumbs up. Hmm. That means you like it, right? Thumbs up, hey, I like it, that's cool. Or if you do a thumbs down, that means I don't like it. There's sign language. There's when you're smiling or not smiling that usually that's a, that there's no if you like it or don't like it. You can use your voice. You can use technology by texting others or by what is going on right now. We're doing a Zoom call. So there's lots of ways you know, to let others know what you like, what you don't like. 
And so that's what we're trying to let everybody know that you can do it. You are born a self-advocate. So everyone can do this. All right, Kelvin, you're up. Yes, so, um, so self-advocacy is a civil rights movement. Like Martin Luther King, many people spoke up or advocated before us. They made it possible for people with disabilities to be asked to join the decision-making process. Um, people are now asked what they want. People are included in important meetings. People are making choices about their life. And right here to the right of the words, we have a picture of Martin Luther King standing in front of hundreds, if not thousands of people. And it looks like he is advocating. Um, he is speaking up. And I would like to say that um, um, advocating is very important. I've had, I've had, and I have planned lots of opportunities to be sitting at the table advocating for what I want and for what I don't want. Next slide. Um, Self-advocacy is also a national movement. The self-advocacy movement is the civil rights movement for people with disabilities. And right below that sentence, we have two pictures. Um, one picture is a picture of a sign being held by an individual, probably an individual with a disability, if not um, an individual just advocating and the sign that he is holding, or she or they are holding, says nothing about us without us. And then right next to that picture to the right, as I'm seeing it, um, there's a picture in a multiple, um, it's a picture in a multitude of colors. I would say rainbow colors that says, you've got the power and, and included in the picture is a picture of somebody holding their hand up. It looks like it's in the fist, like maybe they're cheering because they agree they have the power. And we all do have power and self advocating for ourselves. And then below these two pictures, it says, everyone needs help, self advocates too. You have the power, you have the final say, it is your life. So that's what self advocacy is all about. It's, I'm about taking control of our lives. And I believe Katie's up next. Another question is where can you do your self-advocacy? Um, you do it every day, especially when you're choosing what you want to wear, what you want to eat. And sometimes people that are with um, Division of Developmental Disabilities, they will have a big meeting and about what your life is like. Um, and they will discuss things that you need and that you uh, want. Um, you can also have meetings just with your family 
about what you need and what you want also, or even at your, if anyone is in day programs, um, you can even advocate with what you would like to do over there. And then you have the power to do um, what to do with your time. You can decide if you want to go to the movies. You can decide if you want to not go to the movies. Or if you want to go uh, bowling, you can decide if you don't want to go bowling. Maybe you want to take a nap. You have the option. And these are pictures of um, like a t-shirt, choosing what you want to wear. And then there's someone um, serving food at like a McDonald's. And there's a bunch of people with disabilities also around a um, table for their big meetings. And there's some people doing some crafts, it looks like, for what they would like to do with their time. Um, another way um, how you can use your self-advocacy is a lot of people with disabilities, they get talked to, um, their, they talk to their support person or caregiver. Um, like John said earlier, everyone has a way to communicate whether they have words or they don't use words and they use a device. Um, people need to talk and listen to me because um, everyone has a way to communicate and not speak to someone else when they're trying to use their words. Also, you can speak up about how you use your money. You can use, you can um, say how you'd like to use it. And um, sometimes if you have a guardian, you might even have um, someone that helps you with your money, but you can still always ask um, someone that helps you if you can use that money to go to the movies um, at work or school or at your day program. Like I said earlier, you can advocate for what you want to do or if someone is not treating you right, maybe another person at the day program. Um, you can even advocate for things you want to eat at home or what you would like to do at home. And then if you maybe have to go to the bathroom, you might not want to have people in there or in your room. Um, so you can tell people maybe to please knock or even if you are in a group home, you can ask people um, if they could please knock, even your staff, you can ask. Um, your medications, you might not know what they're exactly for, but it's very important to know what colors uh, they are so that you can make sure that if it's a color that you don't recognize, that you might not be able to take that pill and then, or you can ask people, what is it for? Um, so that you can make sure you don't get sick from it. Um, there's a picture of a man that is yelling and there's two uh, friends or people talking and the golden rule is to treat other people the way you want to be treated with respect. The first man, um, as some of you can see, is yelling very loudly. You probably shouldn't be yelling at people to get what you want or need. Um, and then this couple um, right here, they're just talking nicely, asking for what they need or talking about something they like. So when you do self-advocacy, it's not about yelling to get your 
attention or to ask for things. When self-advocating, you have to make sure that you tell them what you want, but make sure to treat people nice and respectfully. And then your parents, guardian, staff, or friend. People are not mind readers. They can't read your mind, even if it's your friend or your staff or your guardian or your parents. Um, it is your responsibility to tell them what you want or need. Um, because it's very important to know that you can speak up, even though if it's not your parents, even though if it's your parents, you need to let them know what you want because they can't tell you what you want, especially if you don't feel well, they can't tell you what you want either. So they won't know that you're not feeling well, or if you're in a day program, they won't know those things, yeah. even if you've known them for a long time. Why is it really important to self-advocate if you have a guardian? Guardians can help make the choices for you and they could sign important papers about you, but ultimately it is your choice um, what you want to do with your life. So make sure you also have to self-advocate to your guardian when, or if you're not sure what a paper is that your guardian's signing, you can have them explain it to you. And the guardian is when you go to a judge and they decide what is right for you when you go to like with a parent or whoever is going to be your guardian. But it's very important to remember that if you don't tell people what you like or dislike, or if you don't ask them why you're doing that or even why it's, uh, what is a guardian, then they have to guess. And what if they guess wrong or they say that you're gonna have a sandwich every day? You, you just have to speak up so that you can get the things that you might want, even though sometimes your guardian might say that you don't have enough money for something or things like that, you still have to speak up because you don't know if they're gonna say yes or no. Katie, before you go on. Yes. Did you, did you want to add something? We had a couple of comments. Uh, one person asked, can anyone talk about people first language at any point during the presentation? Has anyone read good books on the subject? Um, we are going to talk a little bit about people first language and how things were created to help with that and groups. Um, I haven't personally read any good books about that. Um, but I've learned a lot through my self-advocacy group, like the people first. There are some resources on selfadvocacyinfo.org. That is SARTAC, the Self-Advocacy Resource and uh, Technical Assistance Center. And um, they can be found at selfadvocacyinfo.org. They have all kinds of different resources. Uh, people first language is, uh, they're going to touch on it here, but basically um, the movement is moving toward a easy read or plain language model that 
the majority of everyone can use and not just a few people because people first language yeah. means a lot to the people first groups but other groups of self-advocates with different disabilities may prefer plain language or easy read and we have a lot of information about that lind if you want to give my save email you can and i could um, talk with the individual who's looking for those resources. Sure, I'll put it in the uh, chat after the slides. This is All right, I just wanted to make sure. And then uh, someone else was commenting so true when you guys were reading about working with your guardian and not yeah. just having them work on those things by themselves. Um, do I have to self advocate by myself? Yeah, um, this is the most to me, my slide. Okay, go ahead, Michael. All right, so yes, um, as Tani was starting to ask, oh. um, do I have to self advocate by myself? I would say, and I'm sure a lot of other self-advocates would say no. I do not have to do it all by myself. I can always ask the people I trust to help me. And then right below those sentences, um, there are, there is another sentence in colorful letters again. Um, and it says, it's okay to ask for help. And then right next, um, right next to these words, to these sentences, there is a picture of an individual and it looks like he's graduating. Um, and he has somebody helping him. Um, I would say go up to get his diploma. Um, and this individual might be a parent or it might be someone else. Um, but whoever it is, I imagine that he advocated for them to be the one to help him um, as we are able to do. As Katie mentioned earlier, and then um, um, I think it's cool that we are able to see somebody um, who is graduating here. And I think that kind of um, um, that kind of goes off what one of our self advocates was talking about earlier this morning. Um, and then here um, we have a video that we are going to show. Um, it's a short video. It's pretty cool. trying to get it to start hold on nothing replaces the human connection hold on a second and no self advocacy means to speak up speaking up for your rights no matter what the issue or the concern is to speak for oneself and speak for others i have my own voice i speak up for myself standing up for your rights and not relying on staff or your support staff to uh, make decisions for you. The ability to be independent, live your life to its fullest extent. We took issues like the will, will work, will pay. Be persistent what you want when you got control of your life, of your 
every day of the year. Means giving the ability to, to have choices in my life. It's not just about information sharing, it's about being in the, the community. I worked really hard in the community because of my unique disability to get the word out that people like us should be in the community. Speaking up for yourself, but also taking responsibility for your things. Being able to know what you want and then being able to go for it and, and having somebody else that believed in it that's able to help you. I'm gonna fight for those that are like me or it don't matter, it's just, I just don't like people taking advantage of. They want to get the word out that they want something out of life. As much as everybody tries to help people with various kinds of disabilities, we're the ones who really know what we need. For years, the voices of people with intellectual disability were never heard. Decisions were made for them. If it doesn't come from us, it comes from people who don't have an intellectual disability and they don't actually have the experience to talk about it. The professional really didn't listen to us more because they don't know as well as we do what we want in it. Other people will decide what you will do. If you are not at the table, you don't know what those people are going to decide. A part of being a self advocate is to get out there and start networking. And if you don't know how to do that, you should go and ask a self-advocate person that knows how to do it, and they'll help you. There's tons of barriers out there, but attitude what barriers are the biggest, I think. The biggest thing is being included in the community with society, and it's inclusion within college. School. We came out here to learn from y'all in a way, and that's what we want people to understand, what we need help and, and all that from y'all. That's what we want. I like to be out, helping people, and to teach people. I learned to speak speak up and not be ashamed of who, who I am. Just like the civil rights movement before us, we try to do things to help people speak out for what they want and do what they believe in. We just want to let everybody know just because you have a disability doesn't mean you're less than or you don't know or you're not committed to something. We need a voice. We need to get people to listen. It's really important that we speak up and tell people what is wrong in this world and so that we can make it better and we can make a change. Yes, so I hope that that was as enjoyable to y'all as it was to me. And I just want to mention that we do have to kind of speed along. So as the video was implying, um, um, self-advocacy means speaking up for the things that you like. Um, and here we have some pictures. Um, it's three pictures. One picture is of ice cream. And I can agree that I do enjoy ice cream. I don't always eat it. Less nowadays. Um, now that I am older and my body's changing. And then um, there's another picture of pepperoni pizza. I do enjoy a lot of toppings, but I do like pepperoni. So that's one thing I do enjoy as well. And then we have another picture of some individuals and they are exercising. And I do not exercise as much as I should probably, but I do enjoy exercising when I get the opportunity, when time allows me. Next slide, please. And then um, self-advocacy also means speaking up for things that you do not like. And here again, we have three pictures. One picture is of an individual who is cleaning. I can't say whether he likes doing it or not, 
but I know that I don't always like training. I know it's necessary, but I don't like to do it all the time. And then we have a picture of an empty movie theater. I guess maybe nobody like You were talking to... about how you don't like going out you know, to the movies. These are things that you do not like, remember? Yes. Um, um, yeah, um, I do enjoy moving, but I don't always like going to the movies. Um, I tend to fall asleep a lot, and I don't like to waste money on movies I'm going to fall asleep on. Mm -hmm. So I have the option to go or not go. And then uh, below that, we have a picture of a thermometer. I think that's what that is. And um, and it looks like it's 120 degrees outside. Um, so it's hot. And I'm not a fan of the heat. I don't like the heat. Um, so that's another thing I don't like. And if it's hot outside, I can um, I can choose whether or not I want to go outside. So I can advocate for myself there. Go ahead, Katie. Is speaking up hard to do? Sometimes, but we still do it. Uh, we some of the things we might be worried about with self-advocacy is that we might hurt people's feelings. But we have to be afraid. It's, we don't have to be afraid. It's um, something that we need to do so that, and plus it's the person's job, like we said earlier, to listen to you. But it should always be done nicely and respectfully to the person and you always need to be honest about what you want or what you need you may not always get you what you want like we said but at least you tried and that's the important thing and then will i always get what i self-advocate for if I self-advocate perfectly, like you spoke nicely and you did all of that, will you get everything you asked for? No, but at least you tried. And if you don't try, you'll never know um, what you get or what you want. You'll never know what people will say to you about that. If you never try, you'll never know. So we always need to make sure that we try because like this picture of the genie, ma things don't just happen magically. You always have to ask. And even if they say no, at least you tried. Yeah, this is your slide, it's your painting. Oh, okay. Why self-advocacy is important. Which one sounds like you? You might stand up for yourself. Uh, you believe in yourself. I am in charge of my life. I know my voice matters or I say what I think. Or one day you might feel one of these things listed here. And then the next day you might feel different because everyone has emotions. And then one day you could feel this way after you self-advocate. So Katie, which one sounds like you? Which one sounds like me is um, 
I know my voice matters. I think all of these would be something that I feel. Yeah, Why uh, this is your slide? Yeah, the next two ones. Okay, go ahead. Then you have these next two slides. Oh. Why should I be a self-advocate? Reasons to self-advocate. You have more control over your life. You have a better chance to get what you want or need. You can be happier because you can eat or wear what you want or what you don't want to wear or eat. You have a better chance to do things you like or stop doing things that you don't like because you're in the driver's seat. And using self-advocacy is a choice that you can make to do. Why people do not self-advocate is they fear of how people re will react or do. Um, they fear, they're worried about asking for help. They look, feel like they look silly or they're not smart. They fear that someone might say no if they can't do something. Um, they fear they won't appear independent. They fear that they will do it wrong and mess up. And a lot of times, many people fear that they will get in trouble. Thanks. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Hey, guys, this is Jason real quick. You guys are doing a great job. I just want to let you know that we're, we got 10 minutes left. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's talk about it. There are some things that can get in the way of us, um, of us self-advocating for ourselves and for others. Um, and here we have four pictures. Um, the first picture is a picture of money. So not having enough money can be a barrier that prevents us or makes it difficult for us to self-advocate. Um, and then um, we have a picture of somebody at work. I mean, it looks like she's trying to hurry along. And um, our work schedule or not being able to work can be a barrier for us in our journey of self-advocating. And then we have a picture of somebody who is sick. Um, he's in bed and he's sick. And sickness for a lot of us can be a barrier that um, makes it difficult for us to self-advocate. And then the last picture right here is a picture of somebody on the bus, maybe a bus, um, but um, above this picture, it says no transportation. And as we heard one of our self-advocates mention this morning, um, transportation can be an issue sometimes. Um, I've actually dealt with that a lot. Um, I mostly use public transportation, so the bus and the light rail, and maybe the medical transportation, but sometimes it can be difficult to schedule and stuff like that. Next slide, please. And um, um, here, are, here are some more barriers that can get in the way of us self-advocating. Um, no one will let you try. Um, I think that Katie kind of mentioned that before or she implied that, um, that sometimes you might not want to um, ask somebody if you can try because you think they won't let you try. 
or maybe they've actually told you that that you're not able to do something, so that can that can be a barrier at times. Um, and then um, we have another picture right here of somebody with his fingers in his ears, like but he's not trying to listen, and that's how some people can act toward us when we're trying to um when we're trying to speak up for ourselves, maybe they're not listening. Maybe they're not calling us back. Um, so yeah, that can be a barrier. And we're gonna talk about ways that we can we can push past that on this next slide. But we have another picture right here. Sorry. Um we have another picture right here, and it looks like somebody might be afraid of something. And it says afraid of making others sad or mad. So sometimes maybe we might not speak up for ourselves. We might not want to self-advocate because we might not want to upset somebody. But really, it shouldn't be that way. Next slide, please. All right, so here it says, um, things you can do. So things that we can do to overcome these barriers are talking to family and friends and their support coordinator staff and people we trust. And um, we've kind of touched on, um, on that before. Um, but it's important that we ask for help. Um, so find out what other people did. Um, these are things that we can ask people. Um, I'm speaking with people about what they did to overcome certain barriers can be helpful, trying something else um, can be helpful. Um, it's important to not give up. Um, maybe one way doesn't work to try something else. Um, maybe just asking why not. Um, if somebody's telling us we can't do something, speaking up and asking them why not, or what else can I do? Um, whether you're asking yourself that or asking someone else that can be very helpful. Um, if someone cannot help you, then who can? Um, sometimes if someone's not listening to you, if they're gonna ignore you, then that's them telling you in a way that they can't help you. Maybe they're not the best person to ask for help. So I'm asking someone else, um, just taking time to brainstorm who can can be helpful. And then um, I'm looking for other ideas can be helpful. Um, as you see today, there are a lot of self-advocates out there. So just like, taking the time to look around, taking the time to be here, it's one way to overcome some of the barriers in your life. And then asking to try different um ask to try different um try different things can be a good way of learning how to overcome barriers. Um most importantly, just remember you are a self-advocate. You were born a self-advocate. So practice speaking up. Um yeah. Go ahead, John. John, you're up. Yeah, yeah. John says some things happen fast. So, 
Some things take time. Hey, yeah. uh, Don't give up. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes time. Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 I don't remember hearing that GDD is a barrier. It's in the chat. So Maybe okay. Yeah. This would probably work right here. It's uh just to remember that you are not alone, that you have help. People first is here to help you, and all the groups that you're gonna meet later are here to help you because sometimes it takes more than one person to get change. Try to get it. Try to get it involved in the DD subcommittees. They have subcommittees, but they don't always advertise them. So we can talk to you about how the, we have um, the director come on um, the self advocacy meetings and talk to us. And then they've set up some meetings when things were really bad. So we do have that direct connection. And I also volunteer to be on groups where I can meet the people who can change the rules so that they have a face and a person that they can talk to about it. Because maybe they're not sure what families are talking about in just a note or an email and they need somebody they can trust to talk about it with. And we can be those people, you guys. We are very, very important to making DDD work better and um, just keep involved. Let us know if you're having problems because People First has written letters in the past about specific places or things that happened to somebody. And we have helped. Uh, make some changes in individuals' lives by getting involved and being a organized group of people um, who is approaching them instead of just one individual by themselves. So we're here for you. That's what our role is. <laughs>